Good afternoon and welcome to the Lynx Lunch and Learn session. I want to thank you very much for your attendance here this afternoon. My name is Andy Potemski and I'm the Development Director for R&D for the Lynx Design System. Our presentation here today is going to share with you optimization exploration work that we've done with ARM processors in the Lynx Design Flow. The, the goal of this presentation is to share with you key Galaxy methodologies for performance optimization and power optimization, as well as key Lynx automation features to help address designer productivity. The basis for this work is the recently announced reference implementations. Last week, Synopsys and ARM, in collaboration, announced the availability of new reference implementation flows for key processor cores configured for specific technologies and libraries. The goal of a reference implementation is to give you a jump start in your core optimization challenges for your project to help you specifically with your time to market challenges. You're going to be learning about these reference implementations in three sessions at SNUG today. The first, the first session is here. This lunch and learn session will be giving you a, an overview of key performance first and leakage recovery methodology work that we did in Lynx. Directly following this session, there will also be a session where you'll learn about a Quad A7 power-centric tutorial, and that'll be followed by a dual A15 power performance trade-off tutorial. You know, since we're talking about reference implementations and Lynx technology plugins, it would be useful for me to spend just a few minutes sharing with you Synopsys's core optimization collateral. Synopsys offers a spectrum of solutions for core optimization, any, ranging anywhere from a tool reference methodology all the way up to complete production flows with increasing levels of design and technology specificness. We start with the tool reference methodologies. These are very well known to the design community, and they are tool specific but they are technology and design independent, and they are very flexible starting points for just about any project. Synopsys also has high performance core, or HPC, RMs. These now add processor specific optimization techniques into the reference methodologies, yet they remain design and technology independent. Now we're talking about reference implementations and Lynx technology plugins. Reference implementations now become processor core specific, technology specific, and even including scripts, floor plans, and constraints organized around a specific configuration. And then adding to that, the Lynx technology plugins further instruments those scripts for full automation capabilities in the production design environment. And this is really the basis for the, the presentation, uh, this first session that you'll be hearing about. So we're going to break our presentation into three parts. I'll lead off with a very brief introduction to the Lynx design system. Then we'll get to the technical meat of our presentation, where uh, you'll hear from other present presenters. So I'd like to introduce them to you at this particular point in time. Gurjesh Soni is an R&D manager on the Lynx development team, and Gurjesh is going to share with you the selected performance-oriented methodology exploration work. He'll be followed by Devin Bright, who's a senior staff R&D engineer working on Galaxy Flows in Lynx, and Devin is going to share with you his observation in leakage recovery. I'd also like to take this opportunity at this point in time to introduce Bernard Ortiz de Montevallo, who is from, he's a product manager from ARM, and Bernard is actually part of the presentation team immediately following this session. And uh, Bernard is also kind enough to join us at the end of our presentation with Devin, Gurjesh, and myself when we get to the Q&A. So uh, don't forget there's also a raffle at the end of that Q&A. So with that, let's get started. 
a brief introduction to the Lynx design system. Now, I really loved it yesterday during the keynote when Art talked about the age of exponential. He talked about how the market is pulling for rapid integration of a massive amount of functionality into the chips, and that is actually creating you know, a tremendous amount of complexity. At the heart of many of those devices are ARM processor cores, and that's why it's very relevant to talk about our exploration work based on ARM cores and links today. But of course, this pull, this, this age of exponential, this pull for capability in the chips is really making the designer's job very challenging. And in fact, Synopsys Global Technical Services tracks new design starts, transitions to new technology nodes, and then tape outs in those technology nodes. And we can see in the past couple of years that there's been a rapid adoption of 28 nanometers just to deal with that chip complexity. And now as we're entering in one quarter into 2013, we can see that there's a ramp also for 20 nanometer and below, pushing the designers to deeper and deeper integration. Well, this rapid advancement into advanced technology nodes certainly makes your jobs as design engineers very challenging. So if we think about 90 nanometers as a normalization point of one, and then we start thinking about capacity and performance, the sheer number of gates and the frequencies, power, manufacturability, and productivity, and then we start looking at the transition to the different design nodes, we can truly see that age of exponential that R was talking about. All of those factors are multiplying in complexity, making your job as a design engineer very difficult. So, if we can put together a design environment that pulls together complete production galaxy flows with a lot of capacity-oriented, size-oriented, and performance-oriented methodologies already built in, if we can add to those flows complete power optimization and analysis techniques to help balance performance with the reality of power, if we can bring comprehensive block level and chip level finishing flows to help address design for manufacturability and sign off, and if we can help address some of the productivity bottlenecks that designers face, runtime, turnaround time, and overall design exploration time, then we can give the design engineer more time to worry about the content of that smart device and less worry about the design flow infrastructure, the flow plumbing. And that's where the Lynx design system comes in. Lynx is architected with key features and capabilities to directly address designer productivity. There is a complete flexible galaxy production flow with a lot of methodologies already built in. But there's no such thing as one flow suits all designs, and so you have to have the appropriate level of flexibility. So there's also a, a unique, innovative flow automation engine and graphical user interface called the Runtime Manager that gives the designer cap uh, configuration capabilities for execution, for automation, for exploration. There's also a useful graphical user interface called the Management Cockpit for capturing metrics and then bringing those metrics forward for both design engineers and managers for project tracking and reaching your QOR goals. And then we also have technology plugins which allow for design portability, technology node and library portability. And these technology plugins serve as a useful place for us to actually collect optimized design collateral for specific designs. And so that brings us to the next part of our presentation. Gurjesh Soni is now going to share with you work. He's going to introduce to you the design that we worked on and share with you exploration work we did using this technology plugin, starting off with performance first. 